Our world is filled with screens. From the moment we wake up to the time we go to sleep, devices beckon us. Social media, news feeds, and endless entertainment options compete for our attention. It's a constant battle against distraction. I found myself losing this battle. A few years ago, I realized just how deeply these digital distractions had infiltrated my life. My phone was my constant companion, always within arm's reach. Mornings began with scrolling through social media, my mind already buzzing with information overload. Even simple tasks like cooking breakfast were accompanied by a chorus of notifications and the lure of another video. Work involved more screens, each demanding a piece of my focus. The constant stimulation left me feeling drained and unfulfilled. I knew something had to change. The biggest culprit in my digital distraction was my phone. It was the ultimate time sink, sucking away hours of my day. I decided to conduct an experiment limit my phone usage to just 30 minutes a day for an entire month. This was my phone experiment, a personal challenge to regain control over my attention. For those 30 minutes I had to cram in everything calls, messages, navigation, everything I relied on my phone for. The first week was tough. I felt anxious constantly reaching for my phone only to be met with the reminder of my self-imposed limit. Slowly, however, something remarkable began to happen. My mind started to quiet down. I found myself more present in conversations, more absorbed in tasks. My thoughts felt clearer, less cluttered by the constant influx of digital noise. The initial silence was almost deafening. I was so used to the constant hum of notifications, the chime of emails, the endless scroll of social media. Without my phone as a crutch, I felt a strange sense of emptiness. It was in those quiet moments, however, that I began to notice a shift. My senses seemed to sharpen. I started to pay more attention to the world around me. The chirping of birds outside my window, the scent of freshly brewed coffee, the feel of the breeze on my skin. These were sensations I'd been too distracted to notice before. With my phone out of sight, my mind was no longer being pulled in a thousand different directions. The constant chatter in my head began to subside, replaced by a newfound sense of calm. This newfound calmness wasn't just a feeling, it had a tangible impact on my work. I found it easier to concentrate on tasks without being pulled away by the lure of my phone. My attention span, once fragmented and fleeting, began to lengthen. I could sit down and focus on a single project for an extended period without feeling the urge to check my notifications every few minutes. This increased focus led to a boost in productivity. I was able to get more work done in less time simply because I was less distracted. The quality of my work improved as well, I was no longer just skimming the surface jumping from one task to the next, I could delve deeper into projects, explore ideas more thoroughly, and produce work that I was genuinely proud of. Section 3. The Power of Boredom Perhaps the most unexpected outcome of my phone experiment was the rediscovery of boredom. Without my phone to entertain me during every spare moment, I found myself confronted with empty pockets of time. At first this boredom was uncomfortable, I felt the familiar itch to reach for my phone, to fill the void with mindless scrolling, but I resisted the urge. And gradually, something fascinating happened. My mind, no longer bombarded with external stimuli, began to wander. These weren't the fleeting anxious thoughts I experienced when I was trying to focus on work. These were deeper, more contemplative thoughts. Ideas for projects began to bubble up. Solutions to problems I had been wrestling with seemed to present themselves. Section 1. The Science of Distraction My phone experiment had yielded some remarkable results but I wanted to understand the science behind these changes. Why were distractions so alluring? and how did they impact our ability to focus? I began to delve into research on attention and the brain. What I discovered was both fascinating and alarming. Our brains are wired to seek out novelty and stimulation. Every notification, every ping, every new piece of information triggers a surge of dopamine, the neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward. This dopamine rush is highly addictive. It keeps us hooked on our devices, constantly seeking the next hit of digital gratification. The problem is, this constant stimulation comes at a cost. It fragments our attention, making it difficult to focus on any one task for an extended period. Section 2. The Dopamine Loop 
Each time we give in to a distraction, checking our phones, scrolling through social media, clicking on a tempting link, we reinforce this dopamine loop. Our brains become wired to crave these quick hits of pleasure, making it even harder to resist the next distraction. This creates a vicious cycle. We become increasingly addicted to the very things that are hindering our ability to focus and be productive. Our minds become scattered, our thoughts fragmented, our attention spans dwindle. This isn't just a matter of willpower, it's a matter of neurochemistry. We are fighting against our own biology when we try to resist the allure of distractions in the digital age. Section 3. Overstimulation versus Distraction It's important to make a distinction here. Not all distractions are created equal. Some distractions are simply a part of life. A colleague stopping by our desk, a phone call we need to take, a brief interruption to our workflow. The real problem lies in overstimulation, the constant barrage of digital noise that bombards us from all directions. This overstimulation is what hijacks our attention, fragments our focus, and leaves us feeling drained and unfulfilled. The key to regaining control of our attention is not to eliminate all distractions, but to create boundaries between ourselves and the overstimulation that has become so pervasive in our digital lives. We need to find ways to disconnect, to create space for our minds to rest and recharge. Section 1. Embracing the Void Intrigued by the unexpected creativity sparked by my phone experiment, I decided to delve deeper into the concept of boredom. What if, instead of avoiding boredom, I actively sought it out? Could I further enhance my focus and unlock new levels of creative thinking? This led me to my next experiment, intentionally embracing boredom for one hour each day for a month. This meant disconnecting from all digital devices and engaging in activities specifically designed to elicit boredom. I read through pages of mind-numbingly dull legal documents, watched the hands on a clock tick by, and even resorted to counting the individual grains in a bowl of rice. These tasks were intentionally monotonous, designed to push me to the edge of my comfort zone and into the unfamiliar territory of boredom. Section 2. The Birth of Scatter Focus The initial stages of my boredom experiment were, unsurprisingly, quite challenging. My mind, accustomed to the constant stimulation of the digital world, resisted the sudden emptiness. I felt restless, impatient, and tempted to give in and reach for my phone. However, as the days turned into weeks, something remarkable began to happen. My mind, no longer tethered to the demands of the external world, began to wander freely. Thoughts flowed more easily, connecting seemingly disparate ideas in unexpected ways. This wasn't the frantic scattered thinking that often accompanies distraction. It was a different kind of focus altogether, a state of relaxed attention that allowed my mind to wander freely making connections and exploring new possibilities. I called this state scatter focus. Section 3. Cultivating Creativity Through Boredom What I discovered through my boredom experiment is that not all mind-wandering is created equal. When our minds are constantly bombarded with external stimuli, our thoughts tend to be shallow and reactive. We become trapped in a cycle of instant gratification, our creativity stifled by the demands of the digital age. Boredom, on the other hand, creates the space for our minds to truly wander. It allows us to tap into the default mode network, a network of brain regions that becomes active when we are not focused on any particular task. This is where our most creative and insightful thinking often occurs. By intentionally creating space for boredom in our lives, we can foster this type of scatter focus, allowing our minds to make connections, generate ideas, and unlock new levels of creativity. Section 1. Reclaiming Your Focus Our journey into the depths of focus and distraction reveals a simple truth. Our minds thrive on balance. We need both focused attention and periods of restful wandering. The key is to consciously create this balance in our lives. Start by setting boundaries with technology. Choose specific times to check emails and social media rather than letting them dictate your day. Silence notifications, put your phone on do not disturb mode, and resist the urge to constantly check for updates. Remember, you are in control. You decide how and when you engage with technology. Don't let your devices rule your life. Take back your time and attention and reclaim your focus.
Section 2. Embracing the Offline World In a world dominated by screens it's easy to forget the simple joys of the offline world, yet it is in these unplugged moments that we often find true peace and inspiration. Make time for activities that don't involve technology. Take a walk in nature, read a book, listen to music, spend time with loved ones, or pursue a hobby you're passionate about. These activities not only provide a much-needed break from digital stimulation, but also allow your mind to wander and recharge. When you do engage in screen time, be mindful and intentional. Choose quality over quantity. Watch a thought-provoking documentary instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media. Listen to an inspiring podcast instead of getting lost in a sea of online articles. Section 3. The Power of Disconnection One of the most powerful things you can do to improve your focus and creativity is to schedule regular periods of disconnection. This could mean taking a digital detox day once a week, going on a weekend retreat without your phone or simply setting aside an hour each day to unplug and unwind. During these periods of disconnection, resist the urge to fill the void with more stimulation. Instead, embrace the silence. Let your mind wander. Allow yourself to simply be. You might be surprised by what you discover when you disconnect from the digital world and reconnect with yourself and the world around you. You might find that your mind is clearer, your thoughts are more focused, and your creativity soars. Section 1. The Calm After the Storm After weeks of intentional phone limitations and embracing boredom, a sense of calm settled over me. It wasn't just the absence of digital noise, it was the presence of something else, a newfound clarity and stillness within my mind. The world, once a blur of notifications and updates, slowed down. I started to notice the details again, the warmth of the sun on my skin, the sound of laughter in the distance, the simple beauty of a flower blooming in the park. My senses, no longer dulled by overstimulation, came alive. The world was a richer, more vibrant place when I wasn't constantly trying to escape it through my phone. This newfound peace wasn't limited to my personal life, it permeated every aspect of my being. I was more present in conversations, more engaged in my work, more connected to the world around me. I was, in essence, more myself. Section 2. Rediscovering Your Potential Our minds are capable of incredible things. They can solve complex problems, create stunning works of art, and connect us with others in profound ways. But these abilities are often stifled by the constant distractions of the digital age. We become so accustomed to the fragmented, reactive thinking that our devices encourage that we forget what it means to truly focus, to delve deeply into a subject, to let our minds wander and explore. By embracing boredom, setting boundaries with technology, and creating space for disconnection, we can rediscover these dormant abilities. We can tap into the wellspring of creativity and focus that lies within each of us. We can reclaim our attention, our time, and ultimately, our lives. This isn't about becoming anti-technology, it's about using technology in a way that serves us, rather than the other way around. It's about finding a balance between the digital and the real, the focused and the wandering, the stimulated and the still. Section 3. A Call to Focus I challenge you to embark on your own journey of focused living. Start small. Put your phone away during meals, take a walk without headphones, schedule an hour of do not disturb time each day, experiment with different strategies and find what works best for you. It won't be easy. The pull of the digital world is strong, but the rewards are well worth the effort. You might be surprised by what you discover when you give yourself the gift of focus. Remember your attention is precious, it's the currency of the digital age. Don't let it be squandered on distractions. Invest it wisely in the things that matter most to you. The world is waiting to be explored, the depths of your mind waiting to be unlocked. All you have to do is focus.